little bit of a, a catastrophe for Team Star in the last game. They got Lone Druid, and they still couldn't close it out. Effect dominated them. Uh, what are you thinking about this, son? Uh, I guess we'll have to see how the lanes go, and uh, just we'll see if maybe uh, Team Spirit can build up another lead, and then see how Effect can handle it remaining. once again. It was kind of ridiculous. Just I don't know how many games you can win when you're that far down, 7500, so early remaining. in the game. So certainly an impressive display from Effect, but you don't really want to be putting yourself in that position ever. Reserved. So it, it would uh, once again, if you're an Effect fan out there, what, what you're really hoping to see here is them come out. A strong first pick in the Luna. Very, very interesting. Not going for that uh, common idea of grabbing your support, letting them go for the 2-3, and then working from there. A little bit too worried about what they could have grabbed with the Luna, it seems. Radiant uh, team Rubik, pick. exactly. The ideal support these days in terms of first pick whenever Shadow Demon's banned out. But uh, you just want them, to, you want to see your team come out, win these lanes, and then take the game from there. You don't always want to be watching them like 7,500 down, although it was extremely impressive to see them win. Yeah, well, and we, we saw also you were wondering a bit about how the picks inside and all that Five stuff was going to work out. Uh, Team Spirit did opt to take Radiant over uh, taking first pick, so Effect were able to take that for themselves. And, you know, obviously they don't want to end up facing the Lone Druid themselves, Team Spirit, so they ban it out, making a lot of sense. Uh, as far as the way that you felt like last game went, do you think that it was like a playstyle thing that allowed Effect to, to take over Team Spirit, or can you sort of start from scratch at this point? Uh, I think you can relatively start from scratch. You just want to, like, they're still going back for the Rubik and the Weaver. They're not too worried about it. They're just like, yeah, we, we had good heroes. We just kind of goofed a little bit. Maybe they're going to feel more comfortable on that Radiant side, as you said, our team's choosing Radiant. Radiant. Team back as their, their number one option so far today. And it's the Fishman, the Slardar, as uh, Lone Druid took his spot in the first bands. Not sure if Team Spirit forgot about that. I forgot about that hero. I, I don't know. That's he, He's the man. Ten so Luna Slardar, pretty happy with this opener. Uh, probably going to see the Darkseer van from Team Spirit, of Five course, we always talk about. Remaining. But both teams rather strong openers so far. Yeah, I mean, there's all of these tier one heroes that are definitely still in contention for that first round. And it was interesting to me that last time they gave away the Ember Spirit until the very last pick for effect. And that felt like it was so much a part of what made that game work was Afro Ninja's play on that Ember. Granted, there was also the Sashala Centaur, which they took in the first round. But it was all part of this very coherent draft where they could just keep the pressure coming and keep chasing. Uh, and Effect may be going to have a, a lineup that stands their ground a little bit more here. I feel like Luna is not one to run away. If you get ganked, you have to try and kill them instead. Just pop a clips and turn and fight. Uh, so we'll see how that ends up working out for them in this one. Is Effect going to be maybe a little bit of a different look to their draft, at least for now? Yeah, Effect had a very impressive uh, mobility and great use of it in those team fights too. It's definitely not easy to get on top of that lone druid every time, especially with someone like Centaur Warrunner who is, he basically gets that one stomp. Hmm. If you screw up that one stomp, you probably lose the fight. Dire team so well played by him, and as well as those remnants were pretty well on point to dodge at Savage Wars, get the damage done there from FNNJ. Uh, again, uh, into one of his more signature heroes. So we'll have to see. I wouldn't mind seeing a Shadow Fiend. We talked about that earlier, but I do love watching that guy Ten play that hero. They already remaining. have the slider for some minus armor, their dire side. A couple of oh, different things adding up here to make that look pretty good. Yeah, and it looks like Effect are going to take out the Chen, also the Witch Doctor from Team Spirit, so not wanting to have to deal with that nice little combination that you get of a strong laning support ability to keep the sustain going. Um, do you think, though, that for Team Spirit, considering they already have this Weaver, if, if we did see a big group up Ten style seconds. that the Shadow Remain. Scene sometimes bring from Effect, that they could go for a split push lineup? It feels like that might be kind of strong. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, Weaver's a hero that can he can fight right when he gets ring too. Uh, some people wow. even go like ring and phase boots, just like like you know uh, you like to skip boots on Weaver, but you can also join fights really early if you grab treads or phase boots or anything like that and just hop on in. <sighs> Although to be fair, we haven't seen the phase boots Weaver in a while, which is one of the funnier builds I've ever seen. Pick. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, the, the treads are gonna even just be enough there as you build up towards your drag lance of the fights, but. Uh, the ban on the Chen, like, once the Witch Doctor ban comes out, they're like, okay, wait, hold on. What are these guys doing? Like, let's let's just ban the Chen, make them doing something. And then again, the Tinker ban comes out, remaining. which is one of those classic hold-on heroes from that push sort of a strategy. And they're like, okay, Five what are, what are they doing remaining. here? So we'll ban the Drow. Effect definitely, I think, have their finger on the right pulse here as to what Team Spirit are heading in towards. Reserve time. Because like, we had that draft yesterday where it was against LQ, where it was, the, uh, they went the Luna, the Chen, the Lone Druid, and just like right over top of the LQ. Their first game, the Luna, the Chen, uh, the Tinker, and they just ran over LQ. Both games, it was some pretty sick Chen play coming out 
for FNG and those insane rotations, just like he did last game with the Sand King, too. Yeah. Well, and if they wanted to, they could have gone back for something like an Enchantress, but it looks like they want to go for another one of those heroes that's great for pushing, pulling in the Pudge. Now a Silencer from Effect, so that's a great initiation for both heroes that are already in Effect for Effect. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, it uh, allows the Slardar to have an easier time snagging on top of that Weaver. You can just get like Blink Stomp or even just a, a Blink Forward with the Amplify too if he's remaining. a little bit too far away in those fights and can help with his allies from range. It's also great if when your allies Five get hooked, you just pop the Global Silence and soft the Dismember. And it can allow for an instant turnaround Ten potential for remaining. someone like Luna, even if she's the one who gets hooked into battle. Quite strong, Five and that's the other thing too. Is maybe they just take one more Templar defensive support here if they wanted to. It, that would push Slarter to the position pick. three roll, which might be a little bit sketchy. I don't know. With the TA now, the Pudge. If they do hook Luna, do you think she'd be able to survive long enough that the global would matter? Uh, I think I really like Dex here now, just because okay. that would give them Iron Shell up against the TA. It would give them a Mech, uh, someone who has decent mobility to close in on the Luna if she did get hooked to have the Mech uh, in the Greaves just Five to help her out. Remaining. I think that could be a very strong hero here for effect. Uh, we haven't seen their decks here Reserve time. yet. In fact, it's been quite a while. They don't tend to play the hero too much. Hmm. Kind of a rarity in the CIS scene. We've seen this hero all over the place in the qualifiers we've been watching. EU as well, just in general. But yeah, it's been like 20 days since they, like they were rebels the last time they picked it. But. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it was up against Horde that they even went for, and it wasn't the Darkseer Sidar combination. Okay. Uh, and they won, I mean, so that's that's got to be it, right? But uh, that option's there. They might be looking for perhaps some stronger lockdown as well up against the Weaver, or uh, maybe some better D push. Like, Darkseer's okay at split, like pushing the side lanes where you're not at, but just with Iron Shells, you can't really clear waves against someone like a TA or a Weaver who can just kill the Iron Shell right away. Yeah, definitely. That would be tough. Well, I, I kind of like the idea of, of, for right now, Effect being able to go for more team fight. They, they feel to me like they're the stronger fighting team as long as they don't get pucked, uh, uh, Pudge hooked. And yeah, Darkseer Radiant fits the bill. Team that's the call. Okay. Well, that's the hero. We talked about some of the, the downsides, I suppose, to the hero, but maybe that's why it took them so long to make sure. Like, this is a tried and true combination with the Slardar, so it's definitely on the brain of Team Spirit as well. I'm sure they were considering him coming out, but... I think in seconds, terms of mech remaining. heroes to help out with their group up, that's definitely your strongest, your strongest option left. And then F Ninja has his, his final choice here. Is yeah, Dyer again, up against the TA, Ember would have been pretty nice with the Flame Guard, but going to be removed from the pool here. I'm assuming we're looking for... Well, we can go to effect first because they're going to be the first ones to take it. Mid laner... Um, I, I think that with the Darkseer mech, you're Ten probably right that they don't need remaining. a ton more defensively there. Uh, but if they wanted to, they could go for Five OD. A lot of remaining. Team Spirit's damage is just single target focused, and that'd be a great way to have a saving grace on your team. What Reserve do you think about that? Time. Yeah, OD, I think, is an option for sure. It's a TA. I think Leshrac, they might be considering too, to uh, put it, because we saw him mid from them. Uh, it was yesterday, right? Yeah. Or yeah. no, that was... That was VP who had it, but they picked it before in their past for sure. Dia team uh, where they've gone for the mid Leshrac before. So I think that would be a decent choice uh, if they wanted it up against the TA. Just again, someone to get through the refractions up against the Weaver too. You'd have the plenty of damage pumping in through the Invis units. The only downside would be he is a little bit squishy and he has to be up near that front line for someone like Ten Pudge. Seconds yeah. remaining. That might be kind of tough. We'll, we'll see what they Five end up going for. Uh, team Spirit, on the other hand, still looking for an offlaner themselves. A uh, mech does Reserve feel like it might time. be necessary at this point, considering you're going to have it on the side of effect, uh, and they're probably going to be trying to fight into him. But I don't know what, what's your read on on offlaners here? Maybe like single target bat rider. Uh, bat rider, who would they ban? They banned with the ember. Bat rider would be okay uh, up against the Luna lineup. He might run oh. oh my god, Midge Kiro. Nice. What? All right. That is a good choice. All right, well, Dumpster's TA. It's super push strat. Uh, Adfinem ran a very similar draft just a couple weeks back, Night and it worked Stalker. out pretty well. And a Night Stalker. Oh, I love this hero. This is my main man. I never get to see Night Stalker anymore. Okay, oh. interesting pick here. That is definitely not a typical draft that you would see a, a Night Stalker against. He loves to be against those slippery kind of mobility heroes who he can pump that silence on and just be absolutely disgusting. He uh, yeah, he doesn't really do that much. Really, it would be like closing in on the Luna and silencing her up would be, I would guess, the biggest target. Slardar as well, if you can silence him during a team fight, can add a lot of value to your team. 
But uh, maybe just because he is one of these offlaners that builds kind of weird items, he could go in towards a Lotus Orb. Well, okay. I'm loving it. I, I think that yeah. this is this is looking like it's going to be a great game and a hell of a lot of fun. I miss seeing Jakiro. This is the this is the hero. It's the I hero to see. So, what man. is the big problem with him? Tell me a little bit about what your thoughts are on, on Jakiro and, and the problems he's going to face in this game. Oh, Jakiro! Oh, Jakiro's the man. He's not going to face any problems. Okay. Man, the team Spirit going to face problems because he's a dragon. He goes mid. He shoots liquid fire at you. Uh, so. When F and M ran this draft, it was a super interesting game, <laughs> to say the least. Oh, yeah. They uh, they kind of had this snowball going. It was a very similar idea of just the mid Jakira, which teams have run in the past, too. It's not like F and M invented or anything, but they were certainly the most recent team uh, that I've seen to do it, which was just uh, about a month back. But they, uh, I think they were against a TA as well. Uh, if not, I'm sure it was someone similar. But the whole idea being you can dominate your lane. A mm -hmm. 1v1 liquid fire. Especially TA, she's probably the person who suffers from it the most, as you can all guess. The refractions, they get burnt down. It oh, yeah. doesn't cost you any resources whatsoever as a Jakiro to do that. You can force her out of lane, you take the tower, uh, so on and and so on. So the, the idea is that you rotate, you start grouping up. Uh, the downsides being it doesn't offer any sort of gank potential, which typically from your mid you like to see either ganks or you see this like ridiculous position one farming kind of style and it's your position one who will come out of that short lane and start moving in towards uh, your uh, you know level six rotations. They start casting a bunch of spells, all that sort of, or, well, I guess long lane, jeez. I don't even know why I'm using short and long lane. I haven't played any of those other games. But anyway, <laughs> they, they come out of your safe lane. At level six, they pump out some spells, they do their damage and whatnot, uh, and that opens up your mid hero to like farm a bunch or whatever. Jakiro's is kind of weird. He's just like this amorphous blob that's there, and he Seven shoots red stuff at your die. tower, and mm. that's kind of it. He builds a veil. I'm excited to see it. I, I think that it's something that's definitely been missing, and like you said, it'll be a great matchup against TA. Uh, the other thing that I'm really curious about is how this Night Stalker ends up working out, because the, the big traditional thing that you would see out of Night Stalker when he was playing the offlane was, one, Iron Talon was great, uh, because, you know, he's this natural day-night cycle for farming, but also four-minute rune rotations. That was, like, the time that he would go for the kills, and now with these bounty runes that supports are always going to, there's a good chance that he goes in and finds some kills that are on that four minute mark if uh the side of effect aren't careful yeah look what they're up to oh who pinged that oh okay it was Rubik. <laughs> i thought maybe they were thinking about this one but we uh often talk about the idea of killing daxi right level one because he's guaranteed to have iron shell and so they're already up here we were not gonna run any trouble so dire side vision the important thing will be what roger sees and uh so right now it's not necessarily obvious just the sports probably would be out here by now if they were down here. Oh. Well, they've, they've got them though, so a little oh, bit unfortunate. Go. He's going to actually run them into the double ion shell, so they're going to take some harassment. Well, oh, yeah, he's going to end up going down. No way out. <laughs> Typical FNG. Okay. Taking that away. So Iceberg, how does he deal with this? I feel like if they would have just gone for like Rubik pulling in the mid lane, that might have been a strong way to do this as well. Oh yeah, Iceberg, speaking of which, pressure by Roger here too. Roger's like, well, no sports bottom. They're just gonna hit mid. Uh-oh. No damage coming in, the right click's there as well. Vanscore has the lift, and she's gonna pull him into the tower. Roger gonna man up against Vanscore. They have another crush, maybe a little bit too bold, but can Iceberg clean up from the back of it? They do find that kill. So they take right, a one call that <laughs> That's that a good play by Vanscore. Yeah, it was a little bit weird, especially because Crush was actually somewhat close to coming back off cooldown, but. Denied. Nicely played there. As long as it helps Iceberg out in this lane, all that matters. Yeah. It's what they need. And Jakiro is supposed to be having this great time. Currently 2-4 and four in comparison to the 5-3, and three, so very tough. In the meantime, though, they're able to get that crush. Able to hit on the FNG. That was a quite big AoE. And well, they take down DK Phobos. Now also going to chase down FNG. Roger, a ton of armor, is going to be able to trade aggro right after this, I think. Maybe? Oh, he didn't trade that change, aggro. man. Oh, I swear, ever since they changed how aggro works on towers, I've seen more pro players die from towers than ever before. Like, it's it's more difficult to shift the other person because it takes like one and a half seconds or something now. Like, that weird change where you have to like actively attack the tower basically as someone likes to do in that situation to fully get the tower off you. Man. Yeah, and uh, the unfortunate part is now you're also going to get ran at Arzeek in a ton of trouble. FNG 
has level two, hasn't thrown the hook in it yet, but oh, they're going to be able to find that kill nonetheless. So more silence or, or more uh, flesh heaps going to be stacked up for Pudge later on in the game, and Sounds are not able to stack up his own in, unfortunately. Yeah, now mid though. FNJ, he did salve up, so he's feeling himself heading back in up against Iceberg. Now he'll just. Eh, eh. He's thinking about trying, he's like, nah, I'll just clarity. I can, I can wait. Oh, man. A little bit risky up against a TA though. I'm not sure how long this will even last. FNG looking for the deny. Do they get him? Oh, he hid way in the trees. Look at that little alcove of pain. FNJ is dancing in mid to keep this clarity alive. It's actually hilarious. <laughs> he does that up. Oh, he still has it. What? Iceberg doesn't even opt towards tapping him when he's right next to him. Very impressive stuff so far from FNJ. Wow. That was pretty funny. He actually just got like a full wave of CS, not even losing his clarity up against Iceberg. Quite impressive. Well, uh, it's starting to even out a little bit more now in terms of the CS. Uh, when is the point, like, have we passed the point where Iceberg should just be kind of getting dumpstered here, or is did you, like, sort of miss a window for the, the Chikiro? Oh, no, she's still, like, uh, I think if she was to, like, stay in lane against Chikiro in this moment, she would just not be able to get all her last hits. And okay. nice scan spots the fact that Roger's there. But... Oh, and FNG. trying to make the wrap? Yeah, they, they know he's there. What? All right, he has refraction still. All right, yeah. Chase. Smart play. FNG on top of him, looking for the deny here. Is actually just going to run through, do the OP op Now, backing out away, but Vance Force showing up as well. And not going to be able to get the rune either. Good play. Yeah, knowing that he would go for that four-minute rune too as he was in their jungle. So nicely timed there and uh, negating once again this pressure from the Jakiro. Just not allowing him to... Uh, slow down your TA, she gets herself a kill, and she'll be essentially caught up with him, but she definitely does not want to come back to lane yeah. against F and NJ in those sort of moments. Now, though, with the F and G being here, very risky set from F and NJ. If he doesn't see that Pudge back down the bottom lane, uh, he should be aware that uh, he can't really pressure Iceberg too heavily. Yeah, that should be a leap and show. They throw out a hook, so... Uh, gonna play that a little bit safer, but this is where the damage starts to mount against that Tier 1 tower, and already brought down almost 400 HP as they are going to end up diving bottom, potentially. DK Phobos is here. That looks like Effect will think the better of at least for now, but they still need a way to deal with Afo Ninja continue to hit the tower with Liquid Fire. Yeah, Matt. Uh, actually, even TP'd home here from Iceberg. Hmm. So make sure he got up his ring, refill his bottle, and uh, give a little bit of space to FNG. Keep pressuring here once again with Afo Ninja. Well, Roger also runs into Van score. That means he can't go in for the wraparound to try and find a kill. So the early rotations from Effect not really bearing fruit, and Team Spirit looking a little bit ahead at this point. Um, how do you feel like the next couple of minutes end up working out? Like, BZZ's less completely alone top. Yeah, it'll probably stay that way for a while. Uh, Darkseer not looking to do all too much. And Sh yeah, Shastro had just TP'd home. He was low on mana, but not HP. He's no, relatively okay it. up top. But uh, now he's coming down bottom, so we might see Sedoi actually rotate top. And uh, begin farming there, perhaps? Or. I don't know. Shastro, I guess, not finding enough CS up top. And he feels like maybe there's just going to be too much damage from the Weaver at this point. And he won't be able to utilize his iron shell, so he just leaves top. Uh, Good maybe it's nighttime as well, too, so he's thinking DK Phobos will be rotating up there, which he is. But there's not even anyone soaking up top, which is pretty brutal for them. I'm sure Roger is like, considering it at this point with his friends like Boots, but instead oh. they're going to try and get stuff done with the iron shell. And they find Vanscore in the trees, too. This is this is really sad. Two ironwood branches for Rupik, and Sedoi is just going to punch him in the face. Oh, that's brutal. And, I mean, they're going to be able to push down this tower at least a little bit, but with the Iron Shell even thrown now on top of your own creeps, this is uh, kind of a frustrating situation for Team Spirit as they're going to lose bottom tier one. Yeah, and difficult to pressure in here unless they manage to find a hook from FNG. I think that was really good play by Effect. Uh, like, because they even thinking about sending the Spirit or the, uh, the Slarder up, and actually they do oh, find our Zeke. That really hurts. So, one pick off at the very least. Oh, still a tower down below, though, so happy with that. Uh, again, Sidoi possibly roasting out here, maybe even once he just finishes this catapult. Things are getting a little bit risky. I guess he has a, an observer, and he can also see a couple of heroes mid, so for now he'll stay. But I'm sure they don't want to give up mid too easily as a factor right now. Hmm. Jeez, still, still stay down here, Sidoi. 
Gotta get out of here fast. I'm sure he knows it. Uh, he does have Eclipse. Oh, you're you're crazy, dude. Uh, yeah, there's the silence. That's a long duration silence. Has the TP, but yeah, there's no way out. Sadoi. That hurts. just stupid. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's no other way to put that. I don't know. Uh, I'm not usually one to call Radiant people out, but tower. with a Pudge There's and a Night Stalker, I think Sadoi just getting way too greedy there. I, I don't know, maybe he just he was so close to the headdress that he really wanted that last bit, and he was like, yeah, I'm just going to buy it up, and then I'll, I'll TP out of here. But way too greedy. Yeah. And so heavily punished. Yeah. That sucks, and it's a big kill at this point in time in the game. They are going to rotate in. It looks like FNG trying to find the hook a little bit off the mark. Has to back. He thought about going for the DD rune, but doesn't end up getting it. Vian Shell, Surge, but not going to look for the fight. Okay, well, Effect can rest easy for a bit here. It is daytime. Phobos likely to stay within range for the most part. You'll likely see him around the map. Doesn't uh, have an Iron Talon, so he can't stay off. If he does stay off the map, he's going to be farming very slowly. Rather just be in a lane somewhere, likely like letting people know that he's not up to too much. Be more beneficial in the long run. Trying to get up in some treads. Already hit that urn, as we saw. And he got the kill there. Mm. But uh, likely to go treads right into the Aghanim Scepter. And uh, TA and Weaver, pretty good heroes to abuse that vision that he can provide. As well as, I guess, uh, our hooks too. FNG can snipe a couple. Definitely. It's maybe the, the big play. Uh, Fono Ninja in the mid lane is going to have to turn to fight this one. And a lot of damage being dealt out. He does have stick charges trying to stay alive. He actually is going to be able to, at least for now. But yeah, I'm not even going to pay in at the end. And it looks like Iceberg may be going to run down Roger as well, who has to escape. And, well, slowed Crush going to be there. He might have been better suited going up to the top side. He's going to be pulled back in now by FNG. The damage is going to be there. They find the kill on a Pudge at the very least, but a double for Iceberg. That is giving a lot away. Yeah, nice use of the nighttime there, too. Often underlooked part of Night Stalker. Just reducing that vision to just so ridiculous. 675 whenever he pops his ulti. Oh, Root. They've got BZZ. Ah, oh, nice lift back away from Vanscore. So they won't be able to catch him. In fact, if Pudge is here, you got to be careful if you're Zeke. They drop down the ward. This is going to end up being spotted. At least Silencer will. And they back out. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, they're getting depression in the mid lane as nighttime expires. Don't worry as much about FNG's rotations. And it's getting a little bit spooky when you have that reduced vision up against a Pudge. And they see FNG here as well. But four heroes mid. And Arizzi cannot see far behind. And you talk about the mechanism that could have come out later from effect as a saving grace for them if they do end up getting hooked. But right now there's no answer. Vance score drops real low. Taunts himself away. Very nicely done. Radiant's but yeah, the tower goes down, tower so the pressure is going to start to mount, and FNG has to hit these hooks to make it work. Also, our TA isn't really exploding right now either. Um, one Ancient's cleared out, but hasn't been able to move in the second one. Doesn't have a stack. Might be able to grab it in time, but the Dire do have vision on it. Not blocking the camp, but keeping their eyes. Let's see what Dyer's TA's up to. Iceberg won't even get a chance to have that stack up for himself either. Smoke again here from the Dire Radiant Vision. They have an Observer here, so I think that was just spotted. Dyer's middle tower is yeah, under it's attack. not reacting, at least for now. So, Iceberg in a lot of trouble. This should be a kill, and maybe Dyer's even a Courier Snipe. They're not going to end up going for it. They just go for the Crush. Sentry Ward placed down as well. They could, uh, and they make, make sure to get that one. Phone Ninja, the one that picks it up. So, that should be a bit more towards his next item, whatever he wants to go for. Okay, again, talk about knocking Ancient Stacks, now dying too. Oh, they hooked and in Sadoi. There's the Eclipse. FNG, though, is going to end up dropping, so we actually going after here. BZZ also turned around. The Macro Pyre is there. Sadoi has the bugs on him. They need to take it off. It's not going to be enough, though. And BZZ is going to die to the fire in the meantime, so, well, the chase maybe going to continue. DK Phobos. It doesn't look like they're going to be able to run down Roger. They actually turn back it around. A Ninja there for the damage. Too much magical with the Veil out and online. Vanscore also turned upon. They're going to be able to run him down as well. Double for our Zeke. And, well, that's going to be minus eight almost Radiant's off of that fight. Yeah, an Iceberg still 20 seconds on cooldown on the TP scroll too. So can't even come up top and try and contest this. Can't help with FNG if he manages to hit a hook. So this tower should go down. FNG hoping he can just grab one for himself here. And he even might be close here. Oh. Man, that was being pinged out too. He was Radiant's like, yo, this slider is going to go for the room. Just just throw the hook. <laughs> he gave almost one that chucked, but 
FNG not off and towards it. I, well, that might have been a pretty nice little moment there, but I'm fortunate that it didn't end up working out for him. But still 10 to 10 now, and uh, looks like Effect a little bit in the lead. How are you feeling like this is working out for them? Are they happy? Oh, was that Smoke Under Ward? No, it wasn't quite. They're being blocked by the trees. Do you feel like they're they're okay with the progress of the game so far, Team Spirit? Uh, for Team Spirit, they really need to just get this Deso up and work from there. We're close. Only about 300 gold away, but Iceberg just doesn't have full potential. A lot of his gold just being kind of empty right now, plus 24 damage isn't a big deal. Oh god, they're gonna go on to Sedoi right now. FNG pump faking the hook, but they are gonna be able to run into him. Starting to get the slowdown. The veil is there as well. They need to go for a surge, and they are gonna search for a Roger. Deacon Focus is there, gets the silence off as well. Chase to continue. This might be baiting them into a bad position, but well, the hook is gonna be off the mark. The chase continues. They kill off the pudge. Roger fights right into Iceberg, and no Deso at this point. So all of that potential net worth is not gonna end up being used to its full effect. Roger hiding out and away in the trees. The urn is not going to kill him off as he TPs back home. So they lose another two. Oh, my some great play from Roger. It's very well done. Just like always popping in and out, knowing his limitations on the slide out of there, and just TPing out right before going down to the urn. Even though he was silenced too, he knows like, well, they don't have enough damage to kill me. I've got my team backing me up right here if they stop moving. So he's just being this position for a chaser and helping himself towards that blink daggers. He does go for that uh, split push idea that was mentioned during the draft. He's like, all right, guys, <laughs> I don't know what's going on down there, but I'm gonna do my best to get a couple oh, objectives here. Yeah. Oh, Iceberg does have the Deso now after surviving the engagement bottom. So uh, a kill, perhaps a chance to head into the Roche Pit there for both teams right now. Would be a pretty big boon for them if they were able to secure that. And well, we'll have to see how it goes. The unfortunate Radiant's part is that these smoke plays and the movement around the map by effect just feels like they're always one step ahead of Team Spirit. And now Roger going to wrap around. He spot out a couple of heroes. The ward plays down immediately. This is going to get taken away. Yeah, no, uh, no reason to be carrying sentries at the very least for the Radiant side, so not immediately available. That's another important thing about fighting Night Stalker too, just the idea of throwing the wards down during the actual team fight. That's something you'll often see. See, so Pops Darkness, you oh, just need those wards to help. They got him with the purge creep. Oh, DK Phobos, that hurts. So, getting closer to that Midas, but was not going to end up being able to get it. They're split pushing with Weaver, like you said, but this is going to be a tier 2 tower gone before the top one is, I'm sure. And that really hurts him as well. Not getting in towards that uh, Midas. If he's, uh, he's already stuck with the glove too, so he's in this like awkward moment where he really wants to head in towards it, but then there's just so much gold that's not going into an Aghanim Scepter. I mean, you can understand though, like this is the, their off laner. He has to be able to scale well into the late game. Granted, it is a Jakiro mid, so he sort of falls off, but I don't know. At the same token, you need something out of this guy. So. Yeah, that's, uh, again, another problem that we often find in Night Soccer lineups. Just, uh, he really opens up for another position four, or, like, some other supports do. Uh, Coddle, even, like, Night Soccer being on the same team with the Coddle. <laughs> Don't buy eggs, but... The whole idea of just, you want that hero that can farm very well. We'll take advantage of the fact that you don't. Darkness is about to be up. They get the global off, though, with a big vacuum wall on it, too. They're gone. Sadoi takes them down, and they do pop Darkness, but it came a bit too late, and now they don't have the real great follow-up now. Actually, Iceberg just not going to be able to control up anybody. This is Roche going their way, and there's nothing they can do about it. That's painful when you have the vision inside. Still can't get anything done. FNJ now destroys the trap. He's uh, debating or something, but... Aegis down. Sadoi, got it. Effect have definitely, to me, looked like the stronger team, and... I, I'm still... I, I want to talk a little bit more about this support silencer. How, he's died two times, as we end up seeing the catch and probably kill onto Sashlo, trying to run away. Maybe not. He's going to be able to get to the... Fountain or the, the shrine, it's not going to be there enough though, so he ends up falling still. But about that silencer, up to now 24 stolen in. How good is this hero in your estimation? Uh, very strong for sure. He He's kind of weird. He like scales so well 
into the later parts of the game because of that stealing of the uh, the damage. Like it's not the fact that you're just reducing it from your out from your enemies, but the fact that you're just getting so much damage yourself. This Helm of the Dominator build that uh, I guess you could say popped their eyes by Puppy. So they've been picking it quite a bit for secret. He's always building up this helm. It's really strong. It adds a bunch of attack speed, which then further capitalizes on this flat damage that you get from the stolen intelligence. You're also then a support who can use this helm to grab a creep that suits what you need against the enemy, be it purge, be it frost armor. Uh, just even a couple extra stuns, some nets, a little bit of push. It's one reason that item is just so fantastic right now. Yeah. And uh, it just suits them in every way. The global silence, the cooldown, yeah, it's pretty brutal. 130 seconds, all levels. It can be tough, but there's a reason. Like, it's so strong. And being able to save any of your heroes to get hooked out there, just like we saw with Sedoi in the top lane, although he went down, it uh, ended up being like a four for one or a three for one trade because of it. Yeah. Quite strong, and of course also helping to facilitate these pushes if they want to do it. That extra regen that you get, not to mention any other regen that you get from like an unholy aura or whatever else you want to pick up, or even just, honestly, cloak aura. But now, the pressure is going to be mounted. Team Spirit, they're up in the top lane, they're going to need to come back and defend. This is actually, TA doesn't have a TP for 13 seconds, so they're going to be able to get set up. They go for the hook in onto the illusion, not really doing a whole heck of a lot. Sasha is there, they pop the shrine. TA still not back yet, she is going to start getting her TP ready, but already the tier three is almost below half HP. I was gonna say TA pushed is like almost as fast as this group, and now they need to stop TPs, but they can't get there in time. Oh, and so looks like you will get out for effect. Train a lot of damage between those tier three towers. That's a big win for Team Spirit, though. Dyer's top More damage down on the tower. Only a single hero up top. It's great yeah. for TA. I would have liked to see her set a meld trap maybe onto Jakira. That would have been nifty, but not going to go for it. I don't even know if he could, she could kill him, actually. He's got 11 armor. <laughs> yeah, I guess like one liquid fire on you and you can't do anything. He has a Yule Scepter. Yeah. He'd probably die. But it would have been cool. <laughs> so there's that. That's what that is about, you know? <laughs> Speaking yeah, of exactly. cool, check out all these sentry wards. Right see next this? to an observer, he Dyer's just middle tower ran past. Attack. There you go. Shasha's like, ah, someone else can grab that. Or Zeke's got it. All right. Hmm. Well, only one tier 2 tower now remaining on the docket for the Dyer to eventually kill off. I like this movement here by Team Spirit to try and pressure out the lane so they can't push. If they can kill off this whole creep wave, that definitely shuts down some more of the pressure. I'll be careful though. Okay, Phobos, make the one on the menu. Yeah, this is quite the wrap. Oh, Sedoi finds him. There it is. They're going to be able to chase him down and no TP out in the way for him. Might is going to be on cooldown, too. Spawn it. Oh, that hurts. That's the real pain. <laughs> All right. The Aghanim's queued up, but I'm not sure if we're going to get to see it this game. Yeah, it's definitely I feeling like it's Vex game fortune. to lose at this point. But, you know, little bright spots in this otherwise dark land for Team Spirit. You got a top net worth TA. This hero can explode pretty much anybody on effect if given a couple of seconds. Um, what else do we really have here that's going to allow effect to maybe overextend and, and then get punished? Like, what's the play for Team Spirit here? Yeah, Iceberg and uh, VZ both similar. Uh, we have that big Deso, and then we have this Diffusal Blade too, so... It kind of puts a lot on FNG, who does get the hook. Alright, Global but, comes uh, out. Alright, baited Global. Nice. Okay. We're dying. <laughs> He ends up going down, and Sadoi is out of position now. They turn on to him. A lot of damage to the ice oh, pad. Was waiting for that eclipse. Oh, oh he's he, so can't, low. he can't wait. Oh, man. And our Zeke, well, he might end up going down here. They do have that Lucid Beam in a second from Vanscore. If they want to use it, they end up finding the kill. BZZ doing it. Nicely done. That's also the Aegis down. Roger, turn around. I know Iceberg. That's going to be a whole heck of a lot of damage. And, well, can they steal Eclipse? You have Steel in just another second as nah, Rubik looking to take it. it. Oh. Oh, he was waiting for that too. He was so close to getting it. Oh, and Van Score now going to start to fall. They don't hit on the hook for Afro Ninja. Roger is dropping low there, and they managed to find that kick. Also a dismember on Afro Ninja, but FNG not long for this world. He gets the deny. But, ugh. Still not great. No, not, uh, not the best fallen. situation. But Aegis down. It was a difficult fight for sure for the Radiance, so. Uh, the game's still going, which is good for them. Uh, again, although they're not that far in net worth, it's just uh, with the way that these lineups are accumulating right now and just the, the impact of someone like Global Silence versus this Night Soccer, even though there's that difference of net worth, 
you can see that well, one is far more impactful than the other in the current situation. That Come definitely can change, though. Uh, those kind of fights do help. Uh, all their tier twos are down, though, so the shrine goes down. Uh, bomb shrine will be uh, removed whenever, or, or whenever they happen to be there. Not exactly a big necessity. Well, and I guess the other thing that we can sort of talk about here a little bit is if Spirit do manage to hold on to high ground for a while, if you're you're capable of keeping this effect team off of your base, how does the oh, next nice couple of minutes change? As, well, our Zeke is going to be able to walk away from this. His own Helm Creep helping him out a little bit. They are going to be able to find that kill, but FNG now also in trouble. Vacuum wall back onto two. Oh, God. DK Phobos dead again. Okay, it was a nice hook though. I, you know, he, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he got the silencer, and uh, unfortunately, he ran nice soccer to his own death as well. Not expecting so many allies to be nearby. Got to take a couple risks when you're down, and that was one of them. But probably not expecting it to be so heavily punished. BKB now pushes up here from Iceberg. This is the big moment. Ten seconds of glory. So do I know ages this time? Global silence. It's back up as RZ respawns. So. Hard life. Uh, this is going to be a tough one to catch. Oh, that, cool. that would have been a big one. They need that. I'm kind of waiting for Afro Ninja to pick up a Force Staff. Like, it might be Dragon Lance into Force Staff time or Force Staff into Dragon Lance time. Need some way to get away from that Pudge. Am I, am I dreaming? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, I think he's just going to try and not get hooked. He's got the Yule Scepter for movement speed. He's got the bots for movement speed. He should be able to just outmaneuver it. Okay. Not having vision can be uh, a bit frustrating, but Ooh. to be honest, like. Iceberg oh, force will help. That's not what the do button. you do. Oh, that ain't the button. Oh, Blessings upon the loyal warriors. I feel like they're tilted a little bit here in this one. They're just a little bit off their off their yeah. game. Has it been the best series for them so far? Well, we got a four staff though. Uh, there you go. <laughs> like FG just bought. Oh, it's, it's on the other team. One. That's Roger. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. But. Well, Shrine's gonna go down. You also almost have a butterfly completed right here for the Luna at only level 16. Like, this is so much farm so early. Well, they are gonna maybe go for a bit of trading off some bases possibly here. Uh, I wonder if they can see the Iceberg has no TP though. I'm surprised they didn't just keep going and so oh. Riskier poke, but, you know. Iceberg will get back. You'll have his BKB Dyer's off cooldown at that point as well, so that's something. Tower. Yeah, Dyer's they take it down. That's the first tier 3 tower of the game taken. There you go. Victory. Dyer's Team Spirit. GG. Call it. It's over. Yeah, they're not going to catch out anybody over here, but on the other side, Iceberg spots out our Zeke in some trouble in the trees. <laughs> blocked in. <laughs> yeah, that hurts. That hurts. The only mystery is how you all right, it's nice so pickup. Long. Daytime now, though. And probably going to see the aggression come back up from effect with that butterfly and Greaves now picked up, too. What monsters. They are going to be so hard to deal with. And, you know, the blinks, the jump forward. Now Roshan on the menu as effect ready to take this one. And I feel like at this point, Team Spirit, they might just GG out if they see the Rosh gets taken. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, probably going to fight this one. This is the TA trap. Uh, Sentry not pawned. I'm sure they know that they have vision of them. TA is always going to have a trap oh, in there. Look at this. Centaur as well in the area. They are going to kill it off at the very least, but Sashlo looking for initiation. Vacuum wall onto two with the crush. Oh, well played. The ice path is down as well as the macro fire. They never stood a chance. BZZ is going to be pulled back into there. Yule Scepter lift up, trying to find that kill. They have the dust down as well, and well, another ice path gets thrown, and BZZ is brought down. Yeah, that'll happen. Yeah, sick vacuum. Catches the only two heroes that matter in that situation. F and G can't find any sort of disruption with the hook there, and that's pretty much it. Damn. Yeah, it's it hasn't really felt like there's even been these like great big combos. It's just been pick off after pick off after pick off and effect constantly taking the objectives. They've been playing really clean Dota. Yeah, definitely looking strong, and again, another strong performance from Shoshlo here. 4, 2, and 9 on the Darks here, just doing what the hero needs to do. Innovative draft and going for the uh, hero, showing the flexibility, so do I get hooked in with 8? 
Oh, vacuum again. They don't have the follow-up with the stun until that ends up coming through. And, well, Roger is going to be stunned himself, but DK Phobos just has to back out and away. They buy back on the Pudge. Hooks in a creep. A little bit less than ideal. And more towers are falling. There is just no answer. Even able to hit BZZ there on the stun. And, well, the follow-up Ice Path is there as well. Iceberg trying to fight. He misses the meld shot onto Sedoi. Can't even run down our Zeke right here. Is still so much armor. And the hook pulls back in Iceberg. BKB going to be completely mitigated in terms of its usefulness. And it's just going to be Barracks going down. Oh, God. Well, two-person Ice Path. FNG catches on to Afro Ninja. Still not going to be able to bring him down. He's still got the Ghost Scepter if they need it. Greaves are finally popped. But they haven't even run through the Aegis yet. And Vance Gore, he's not long for this world either. Well, maybe they kill our Zeke. Possibly? Okay. Have to the deny. I love to see that every now and then. But, I don't know. At this point, Team Spirit feel like they're just sort of playing for pride, but... Yeah. Sid always is like standing the base, you know. Oh, God. Whatever. Still of ages. There's the Eclipse. DK Phobos gone. There's Vanscore gone. BZZ trying to run away. They're going to be able to get him as well in just a second if they want her. You know what? Who even cares? Just take down the... Two, three tower. And in just a second, they're gonna have global again. Yeah, no, this one's done. Super done. 20,000 net worth, 7,500 experience. Vacuum, not on the mark. They pop BKB again, aren't gonna be able to go into Roger. They also pull an Afro Ninja, but there's gonna be the global. So Iceberg also silence getting ran down by Sadoi. Ice Path right on the tip, and. Well, BZZ can do all that he wants, but you got the Ghost Step to run away, and Sashla is still hitting the towers. Darkseer punching out there. And Sadoi is going to get his Aegis burns. Okay. Well, Bale. Ice Path there. Sadoi turns. They missed the Ice Path. I, Team Spirit really, they just don't want to give up right now. <laughs> they just not throw it in the towel. Do they have a chance? Can they no. do it? <laughs> 6,000 gold on the Luna. Yeah, this is... I mean, it's good to see them not give up. And, well, that's 900 gold going into the pockets of Sedoi. Looks like BZZ is going to walk away from this one. And DK Phobos chasing down our Zeke. He the uh, internet infrastructure strat. Let's mm -hmm. just hope that before that they can win, uh, the entire internet system goes down to their town. Okay. Like our, our first series of the tournament. Oh, so, BZZ. Uh, maybe they'll have to forfeit. BZZ alive on sub 100 HP and finds a kill, but they lose DK Phobos. I'm, I'm like half expecting an all-chat question mark at this point. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the point I will be at here. But yeah, I'm just playing for fun, goofing around, I suppose. Yes, this would have been a great one for them, and... The unfortunate part about it, too, is that it means they're probably going to have to face VP in the lower bracket. So Team Spirit certainly not wanting to give up if there's any possibility. Oh, nice but Got him. GG finally ends up getting called as Effect take down Team Spirit. And that's going to punch their ticket into the next round of these playoffs here. Very impressive 2-0 from Effect. They take the down, down and out into the lanes. Managed to win that on back and 7,000 lead. Game number two didn't look quite as close as the, the Night Soccer never quite got off. I guess like Night Soccer Jakiro are two polarizing somewhat picks here in this game. Not the most common heroes to see. I, I really like that Jakiro though. We talked about Leshrac being a possibility for mid lane. Jakiro very similar. Has a lot of the same uh, uh, aspects in terms of the hero and the push element and whatnot. And very much working out there. Excellent counter to the Templar Assassin and the Weaver really. Uh, the Silence too from silencer just not even just the global but you could also see impacting onto the weaver same way that time dilation is so annoying as a weaver player up against faces void